Uh, there we go. So, um, so again, thanks for taking the time. Um, you should on my screen see um, the dashboard page, the default page you come to when you initially log in. Um, and it is what it has always been, um, mostly used for navigation. You've got your tabs on the left-hand side of the screen, like your profile tab and season management, whatever else. Buttons on the bottom of the screen uh, that correspond to it. There is one thing in here um, that is new, um, and that's this banner at the top of the screen telling you that we are go that we have um, pushed an update to MRP Live. Um, we actually pushed it in the middle of last year, and we're just going to require it now. So if you have not yet updated MRP Live, um, as soon as you open it, it will force an update. I really encourage you to not wait until race night to force that update. There's no interface changes at all to MRP Live. Um, it's just backend database stuff. So to allow us to continue to grow um, that segment of my race pass, um, but it's still uh, there still is an update that is required. So if you have not updated, do so before your first race. Um, as I scroll down this page, there's the app favorite section here. This is the number of people who have favorited the uh, your track in the My Race Pass app. Advantage for fans doing so, they get push notifications when you have a rain out, when you um, your races start, when your fantasy groups open, when you release a news article, those types of things. Um, and then Sandbox is at the bottom of the screen. Sandbox is a siloed environment. It's a direct copy of our live environment data. Um, use it for practicing different lineup schemes or seeing what happens if you click a button or whatever else. And then there's also the help and support links here as well. Um, support links to our uh, knowledge base that I built for season management, race management, all of our YouTube videos, all of those types of things you can find on the help and support documents. Um, so let me continue on here. Getting started stuff, really um, straightforward, easy stuff. I think there's some other people waiting to join. There we go. Um, so, um, so straightforward, easy stuff here in the profile tab. First, you can update your images, profile Im image, your header image. Second, you can edit your profile information. Um, right, track basics, length, shape, whatever. Address and contact information that you want to show in the app regarding your facility, um, as well as location data, set location. People can get directions to your facility in Google Maps through the app um, or Apple Maps, depending on the device, um, whatever they call that. Um, so none of that stuff will ever change, right? Like unless you physically pick the racetrack up and move it somewhere else, you should be able to set most of the stuff one time and just have it be set. Um, track features is the first area in which, um, you know, you might see things that change. Um, and I like to think of this as amenities information, right? Do you allow camping? Do you allow coolers? Do you have ATMs on site? Do you sell fuel? Do you sell tires? Those types of things. You generally, I have people come in here, I ask people to come in here once a year verify that it's still correct as you do updates and changes to your facility um, and then kind of move on from there. Um, and the last thing on this screen is the aliases information. Um, if the racetrack has ever been known by or can be searched by a different name, um, add that other name as an alias. That way people still come to the right place, right? I mean, if uh, if you no longer have Halver Lines Speedway and it's now Proctor Speedway, add Halver Lines as an alias. So if somebody searches for it, they can they can find it here. I-80 Speedway in Nebraska is a good example. Their racetrack name officially is I-80 pushed together. So add an alias as I-80 space or I-80, different ways people could search for it, those types of things. Um, billing tab is the next tab. Um, and I would like to remind folks that generally this time of year, billing information um, is important, right? Because a lot of our profiles bill this time of year. As people get ready for the season, that's when they initially subscribe. So not a bad idea to come in here and make sure your card is still the correct card um, that we have on file that hasn't expired, those types of things. You can change your plan type here. You can change your billing information here. You can view all of your previous invoices here, all of those types of things. There's also an option to comp app subscriptions for people um, that, that need them, right? The My Race Pass app is free, but there are paid features like live timing and scoring and fantasy racing. The all-access accounts here, you can add people based off of email address, comp them that way. That way, they don't have to pay for a subscription. Either two, four, or six free accounts, depending on the plan type that you've got. Um, rewards information is here as well. Um, the interface for rewards is a little out of date. We've changed the rewards information again. Uh, but let me see if we can find that page here on MyRacePass.com. This is the page on MyRacePass.com. There are rewards buckets for um, using MRP Live um, just at 70% of your events, um, selling a certain number of tickets, 1,000 I think it is, 
dropship apparel, fantasy racing, all those types of things will generate rewards buckets. Um, so that's where you can find our rewards information. The interface in the admin side is a little out of date. That's where you can find the information. Um, users here is the next option. Um, users will uh, is where you can add administrators. Um, Want to mention that there's a difference between this year and last year as we have some updated user permission levels. So I'm going to explain those. But adding and removing users is uh, still pretty um, straightforward here. Um, if I need to add somebody, click on the, click on add user permission in the upper left. First, last email address, and then add the permission level. Um, uh, deleting works just the same, right? I want to take, you know, sorry, Ross, you're gone. Um, I want to take Ross Van Eck out of here. Let me delete, and that's how that's all I have to do to delete uh, an administrator. Um, all of those things are, are straightforward. Let me go through the uh, permission levels here, though, as some have been added. When you're adding a permission level, if you add a site administrator, that person will have access to everything, right? So scorer, whatever, needs to be a site admin so they can access the entries, lineups, results of race management, the website tools, the ticketing tools, all those types of things. Um, Everything in my race pass you can access as a site administrator. There are four other limited permission levels. One being the box office user. That is a person who has access to the box office front gate system in my race pass, which is used in conjunction with the reserve seating map. So you're not double selling tickets at the front gate. Um, it also will allow you to gather uh, customer information like zip code and email address. Um, but um, box office, only front gate permission, right? So you don't want them to have access to race management, just that front office or that box office system at the, at the front gate. Ticket redemption user, folks who have access to be able to scan and redeem tickets in the My Race Pass app. If you're using the app to redeem tickets, I like to use the app, Bluetooth the ticket scanner to it. I need the ticket redemption user permission in order to have access to the ticket redemption portal in the app. Um, so another very specific one. Designer role, if you have a website through us, you'll see Clinton Dahl is on the designer role. Nobody else will be. Um, you'll never use that. Um, and then financial reporting is a brand new one and works in conjunction with our payments tab that I'll show you next. Payments tab, um, it will show you the ACH payments that we've made to you, whether that be for online tickets or registrations, now that we've done away with PayPal for registrations. Um, in the tab, people will have access to, uh, to be able to see those ACH payments only people who are who have the financial reporting user permission will be able to see that information. So I'll show you the payments tab next. And again, I'm using a fake profile, so it's not really going to show you much, but you'll be able to filter the screen by date, see all of the ACH payments that we've made to you for, through that duration. Um, again, it is for tickets and for registrations. We send ACH payments to you for those two purposes. Here's where you can review each payment that we make to you, what it was for and how much it was, those types of things. Um, permissions and clear caches you won't see. Those are developer tools, um, so you won't see those. Um, but again, this getting started, this profile tab has expanded this year, but it's still really straightforward stuff, really simple stuff. The only thing that's super new is the added permission levels and then this payment screen. Um, if you have questions about this or anything else, Try to throw them in the chat. Um, I don't have anyone else here joining me. Normally Dakota or Ross do, but they're both not available tonight. Um, so I'll try to monitor this chat if you have questions. Um, if I don't get to your question, I apologize. There are 30 of you and I'm only one man, um, but you can definitely email me, uh, support at myracepass.com. That way any of us on the support team can see that email and uh, I'll definitely circle back if I miss a question here tonight um, in our support channel. So. Uh, jump ahead here then to season management. Um, season management is where I'm going to spend the bulk of our time tonight. Try not to take up too much of your time tonight. Um, Wednesday will be a little bit longer one. Um, but um, season management, there's not a lot that's new here, but I want to go through all of the features really closely um, because we just want to make sure that being as this is all was soda sanctioned, that we understand the classes, we understand when to use the right class, the, the sanctioned classes, when not to, those types of things, um, and all of that. First thing in um, season management, the very top of the screen, you'll see your calendar year. We have, for whatever reason, this year had an abundance of tracks. And I'm not saying just with soda tracks, just tracks in general, a lot of series too. 
that have just started to create their 24 schedule in the 23 season. It's not like a huge issue, um, but for um, you know the the purposes of of um, you know keeping the data clean, we'd sure like everybody to have a new season. Um, so if up in this upper part of the screen you still see 2023 on your profile instead of 2024, let me know so I can fix it. Uh, create a new year for you. Move your 24 schedule to the 24 season. Um, that way everything's looking like it's supposed to. It's a simple, fast, easy fix on my part. We just want to have all the data look clean. Um, so please. If that says 23 up there, create 24. And if you already have a schedule created, let me know so I can move them. Um, config then becomes the next step. Um, config, I always look at as two parts. First, we're adding the series. Second, we're adding the classes. Um, I add the series first because as if I add a series here, it will at the same time add the class associated with that series. So if I add... World of Outlaw late models, it'll add uh, Dirt Super late models at the same time to my list. So I can add series. I can, it's a string of text, World of Outlaws late models, um, and it'll give me the error message that says, hey, this requires Dirt Super late models. We're going to add this class at the same time. And then when I continue, it adds World of Outlaws late models as well as Dirt Super late models to my class list. Um, same thing if I go to add with sort of challenge series, right? Um, if I go to add on, it's of course not called with soda challenge, challenge series. Um, but if I add challenge series, which there are many, um, with soda's late model challenge series, there we go, and add, it's gonna require the with soda late model class. So add your series first because it's just more efficient. You're adding both at the same time that way. Then once your series are added, we can come down here to our class list. Mine is obviously overwhelmingly long because I this is a pretend racetrack where we test many things. Um, but for you guys. There are going to be two instances to add classes here. One, sanctioned classes, right? Very simple to add sanctioned classes. Um, it's, you can, one, when you click add classes, it'll bring you to the class list that you've always had. So you can pretty simply and easily find the classes you've always used, which if they are the Wasota sanctioned classes, find them, add them, whatever. Um, otherwise, you can go to the sanction class option, choose Wasota, and then... Um, select the classes that you want to select here and add them to the list that way. Um, and then if you're running any classes that are non-sanctioned and we'll get into the specifics of when to do that, if your classes are still with soda sanctioned, um, we can go to add classes here and I can, instead of choosing sanctioned classes, I can choose all classes. And now if I'm running modifieds that night, that is not a with soda sanctioned event, I can just choose a modifieds instead of with soda modifieds, or there is like a Midwest mod instead of with soda Midwest mod. So any any with soda sanctioned class will have that moniker at the front that says with soda. Any um, non sanctioned class will not have a moniker. So you can see like uh, mini mods are in here, Midwest mods are in here, limited modifieds are in here, a modifieds are in here. So if you're running an event or a class or for whatever reason using something that is not going to be sanctioned by with soda. Choose the generic out of the box class. And I don't care if you rename it with soda modifieds or whatever you want to do. Like you can rename it to make it appear, but just don't use that class in the program because that links directly with Callie's sanction management screen. And if she sees the class ID show up that is associated with the with soda sanctioned class, it's going to tell her that that class, that that event, that class needs to be sanctioned, right? So that comes into play on test and tune nights and practice nights. Um, a test and tune or a practice night is not a with soda points with soda sanctioned event. Um, so use the generic out of the box class for uh, for a practice or a test and tune night. Um, only use the with soda sanctioned class for a race night that is a legitimate race night that's going to uh, garner um, with soda state regional national points. Um, if that makes sense, um, or why soda, depending on what part of the country you're from. Um, that was an inside joke. Um, but um, yeah, so that's that's the process of adding classes, right? Add your Wasota sanctioned classes, anything that's not going to be Wasota sanctioned that night. Add the generic out of the box street stock and super and super stock and Midwest mod and a modified class as opposed to the Wasota sanctioned class um, and make sure that they both exist here in the config tab. Once you've got the config tab the way you want it, um, the next step here is events. Um, events is creating a schedule, right? 
Um, you can have multiple schedules. I know that many of you have reasons to have multiple schedules. Just kind of as a point of review, um, I like to think of schedules as a grouping of events, especially for points purposes. Um, so I want to make sure that that naming convention is clear. Top of the screen, we talked earlier about a season. A season is just a, a calendar year or, or uh, you know, dates from when your events start to when your events stop. It's just the, the year that everything's put into. A schedule is a grouping of events. You can have multiple schedules per calendar year. Um, if you've got, you know, your regular 20 race schedule, and then you've got five events that are going to be, you know, a special series within you, a, a, a series within your schedule, right? Where you're going to have points for, you know, those special events as well. That'd be a reason to have multiple schedules. If you're going to have a spring season champion and a fall season champion, if you're going to have a three night special event and the last night is um, calculated, the lineups are calculated from the points of the first two, those types of things all would be a reason to have two schedules. It's pretty rare. Like not many of our racetracks have a reason to, um, but if you do, we can definitely employ that for you. Once you've got a schedule added, um, you can go in and you can look at your events that are a part of that schedule. And you can also add new events. So I've got a whole bunch of events that are a part of this schedule. Adding new is exceptionally straightforward. If I go to add events, I can click on the day on the calendar in which I want my event to be. I'll choose the 30th, and we'll use the 30th all week here. Um, and I hit next there. Then really all I have to do is name, description, classes, and times, right? Name your event, whatever you want it to be. Um, add any description information that you want it to show. And I've seen so much in here. I've seen running order. I've seen ticket prices. I've seen um, that there's a county fair in town. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff in this box. Um, and then classes, all the classes that you've added to config are the class options that you'll have to choose from here. Um, so I'll do my stock cars. I'll do my sprint cars. Those are the classes that will run. Um, perfect. There's also times at the bottom of the screen, right? Pits, gates, hot laps, and racing. Pretty straightforward stuff there. There's, I'm showing time trials and eliminations because I have drag racing classes added. You will not see those. You'll just see regular old pits, gates, hot laps, and racing starts unless you have opened a drag strip and want us to work with you there. Then you'll just see time trials and eliminations. Um, but I'll go ahead and add that event. The event is added. Once I have added an event, I can also edit the event by clicking on the event here from the list. Um, and again... You can edit the name, description, and times. You can edit the classes or series that are a part of that event. You can also add tickets from this screen. It's exceptionally straightforward and simple to add tickets. I'll start from scratch instead of copying from previous. All you have to do is set your availabilities, set your um, ticket types, basically, and the number of available and the price. Um, I will talk more about tickets as we go through the week um, on Friday specifically. Um, but yeah, there's ticketing is part of your package that you have through my race pass plus platinum or partner partner. It doesn't matter. It's not costing you anything extra to have online tickets out there. If you don't have online tickets out there, at least for your biggest events, then you're turning away customers. You don't even know about, you know, people will see that there's not tickets for sale and will not buy. Um, it's, uh, you know, I cannot. I, I, I believe very strongly in the power of online tickets and what they can do to affect your bottom line at the racetrack, um, but I won't take the time to stand on my soapbox there. If you want to hear that, come to RPM Daytona next year because I promise I'll do it. Um, so adding tickets, super simple. Um, and that's really it when it comes to creating events on your schedule. Um, that's, that's all it comes down to. Um, it's super simple. I'll jump back here to registrations. Registrations is one part of the program that we have done and are continuing to do a lot of work to. Um, this has changed a little bit and will change a lot um, in the coming weeks. Um, but the foundational elements of registration um, really won't change and have not changed. Um, when you go to add a registration, there are the same registration types, your annual registration that, you know, once a year uh, competitor information gathering where they can audit their own information just like we always do. Um, there is an event specific registration. 
Um, if you need your drivers to register for a specific event on your schedule, whether that's a marquee event or you do it every week or whatever, a general registration we have in here for a non-racing event. I've just helped a track get a pretty big golf tournament going through general registration. Works simple, works really well. I've seen it for pit parties. I've seen it for um, banquets. I've seen it for you know, a lot of stuff. Uh, general registration out there. Anytime you need people to RSVP something, but you don't want to gather the driver information, use this. Um, uh, and then miscellaneous competitor registration as well. That it does not get used hardly at all when we look through the data. Um, but if you need, if there's any reason to have more than one yearly registration or a general registration out there that is not attached to anything, that's a good way to have it. Um, I see it more commonly on the series side than I do the track side. Um, but if you ever get to the point where you need a registration out there, you can't figure out how to make it happen. Miscellaneous competitor registration is a way to do it. One way I've seen this that tracks to use that actually has been beneficial is if you have your owners register as well as your drivers. Um, I have the drivers go through the yearly registration, the owners, I just create a miscellaneous competitor registration, call it owner registration, call it a day. Um, so seen it both ways. Um, now for the changes, right? When I go into edit uh, a, a registration, um, the entry fee or membership fee or license fee or whatever you wanna call it, um, used to always be dispersed through PayPal. We always send that out through PayPal, right? Um, now, we send it ACH directly to your bank account. It's the exact same process as online tickets. Um, PayPal has been a huge pain in the neck for us for many a year. I know it's been a pain in the neck for many of you for a long time. Um, we have done away with that um, for most. And um, registration payments, again, now go directly to your bank account. Um, again, you can view all of those registration payments over in the profile tab in the payments area. Um, and as far as when they're paid out, this has been a common question of ours. For a yearly registration type, every Monday, you will get paid out all of the registration fees that you confirmed last week, right? So Monday through Friday, uh, or I guess Saturday through Friday, any registration that you confirmed You'll get paid out for those registrations the following Monday. Um, for a uh, for an event specific registration, we like to handle it the same way that we do online tickets, where we pay it out after the event is over. Um, the reason for that is is if the event is for whatever reason canceled, um, rained out, whatever, we can then handle refunds. You don't have to worry about doing refunds. Um, and that just is so much easier for everybody involved if we can just refund all the buyers that way. Um, but um, but yeah, we can pay that out like a week before the event. I understand sometimes you need the money to pay the purse. Um, but um, we like to hold on to it till after. Um, and then for the miscellaneous competitor registration works the exact same way as the yearly. We pay it out every Monday. Um, you can, you know, otherwise all the, all the, the, the registration, um, foundational pieces that you're used to are all still here, right? The title, the additional information, the open and close date, the fee that all looks the same, feels the same, add your classes, add your additional price, add your additional late fee, right? If my fee is $50, but my four ten sprint cards cost a hundred dollars, I can put $50 in the fee. I can put $50 in the uh, additional price. Now they pay a hundred, those types of things. Downloads here. Still isn't used as much as I thought it would be, to be honest with you. Um, everything um, that you put in the download section gets sent to them when you confirm the registration via a confirmation email. Shows up as an attachment. So if you want them to have a W-2 or, excuse me, a W-9 or whatever I'm thinking, if you want them to have a minor release form, you want them to have, you know, a PDF of your schedule or something from a sponsor or whatever, um, add that as a download, um, put it in their hands. Um, we are, like I said, continuing to work on registrations um some optional fields um will start to become available right now all of those fields are required um we get some angst from people at times over not wanting to require certain fields like jacket size or whatever um so we're working on making some of those fields optional um adding to our pool of fields that you can choose from um those types of things we're in the initial stages of of changing some of those things um so you know, at, we'll continue to work on that and we'll continue to make you aware of those things through our tips and tricks emails every other week um, as we go through that. By the way, one of them's coming tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's registrations. There's not much more to it than that um, right now. 
Again, it's going to continue to evolve, and we're pretty excited about the evolution that's going to take place there. Um, jump ahead to the points tab. Um, points, really straightforward. Um, you know, the competitor name, the events, the features, the wins, the, all that kind of stuff is all in here. Earnings column, again, not publicly available, not typically um, full and accurate. Um, you can pretty much disregard the earnings column over here. Um, you can toggle between competitor and owner points if you need to. You can toggle between classes, all of those types of things. If you click on the name of any driver in the point standings, you'll come to a night-by-night -night breakdown of how they earn their points and pay. Um, so I click on 3.9 for this driver. I can see that finished third, got 91 points, got $900, 850 in a heat race. Who would pay out 850? But here we are. Um, those types of things. You can uh, do all of those things. How do you delete a class from the registrations page? I apologize, Brenda. I got to that a little late. Um, there is no delete function in this screen, but if you make them inactive, they will not show publicly anywhere. Um, the reason there is no delete function is if someone has already registered under the class that you do not want to appear, we don't want to delete the registration data that they send you, like their contact information, address information, whatever else. Um, but it just will no longer be viewable and visible for future registrants as we move forward. Um, I understand wanting to clean up the screen. I'm not telling you that I think that's the best possible solution, but as of right now, it is the solution. Um, as we continue to scroll down the points page, you have a list of events that are included in your point standing, all the events that you've calculated points for. There's a non-points events, the events that you did not calculate points for here. So you can either go back and fix that or just verify that that's correct. And then there is the championship settings option as well, um, the advanced championship calculation. Um, partner plan only feature because it requires some custom coding on our part. Um, but if you create an advanced championship calculation, it is basically the ability to combine points across multiple classes or have a custom point standing for a class. Custom point standing being throwout nights or um, an age specific point standing or um, rookie only, excuse me, rookie only if you want to calculate rookie points, those types of things. Um, especially the throwout nights. The throwout nights are a big part of that, right? If you've got a 20 race schedule, but you're going to throw out their worst two, um, this is the way to get it set up. Um, typically, you'll reach out to those or reach out to us to set those up because, again, requires some customization on the back end. Um, but um, yeah, we're happy to help with those and provide that uh, type of service. Um, that's basically everything on the points page, not much there on the points page. Um, payment screen here. Um, I'll talk about more on Wednesday as we get done with the race night, um, but just a high level of it. This is where you can view. Purse payouts for every race night for every class that raced, as well as print checks, send the information to QuickBooks, um, those types of things, right? So we'll look at this page in more detail on Wednesday, um, but um, this is here. We've also added links to the 1099 report and the yearly payout report here as well. Um, a little bit easier to find those reports. Same information, same report, same everything, just now shows on the payment screen as well as the reports tab. Last thing I'll talk about in earnest here is the fantasy tab. Um, I am en uh, enthusiastically optimistic about the way fantasy is taking off here as of late. Pretty consistently for big events, getting hundreds, multiple hundreds of teams, um, and that's great to see. Um, fantasy is, at its core, for you, a fan engagement tool. Um, yeah, it's a game. Yeah, it's a little thing in the app. Yeah, it's... it's it, Oh, whatever. It's a fan engagement tool. It's a way for your fans to interact with your event, whether they're at the track or not. Remember, they get bonus points if they're at the track, so it's better for them to be. Um, people, you know, I'm going to, I'm 31, so I'm not that young, but people my age and younger are going to be on their phones at the racetrack, right? That's just the, re or walking through their daily life. That's just the reality of the world we live in. People, especially young people, are going to be on their phones. Give them an option. Give them a way to interact with your event and let them know that it exists. Encourage them to play um, so they're not, you know, on Facebook looking at their buddy going camping, thinking I should do that next weekend. If they're going to be on their device, let them know what's happening at your racetrack. Um, let them, you know, let that be a way for them to foster communication with their friends about your events. Um, Fantasy happens 
with no input from you, um, right? Based off your entry list, um, groups are generated, fans make picks, points will accumulate automatically. You'll have a winner in each class and an overall winner at the end of the night. And those classes and overall winner will build a leaderboard throughout the course of the year. So what can you do to augment that experience for fans? You can do really two things that jump out. One, you can give away prizes, right? Uh, what's more fun than playing a game is playing a game where you can win something. Um, I know that there has been a certain sanctioning body that has invited their fantasy champion to the banquet at the end of the year. I know of race tracks who have duplicated their series champion or, or track champion trophies and given one to the fantasy challenge winner. I know of tracks who have done away with like program prizes and give them away through fantasy. Um, so that way they're not actually doing anything to get like the marketing partner is providing the prize and, you know, fantasy player ends up with a uh, free, um, you know, name your pay-per-view provider here, subscribe with soda.tv subscription, whatever, those types of things. Um, shirts from the merchandise stand, um, percentage off vouchers for the concession stand, whatever you want to do, like be creative with it. Uh, yellow VP racing fuel jug and have your A main starters on your biggest event, sign it, give that away. Those types of things. Second thing that you can do is you can sell naming rights to your fantasy challenge. Um, I'm a sprint car guy, so I'll bring up Knoxville nationals. Knoxville nationals did not have the Knoxville nationals championship in fantasy last year. They had the Avanti windows and doors fantasy challenge. They made money from thin air selling fantasy naming rights to a marketing partner. I mean, these subscriptions through my race pass are not all that expensive. All things considered for a racetrack, you can probably get someone to bite to cover most of that expense and pay for your My Race Pass profile through fantasy leaderboards. Um, it is not outside the realm of possibility to do that. I encourage you to take advantage of that option um, and, and, and you know, do that. Um, and I've spent too much time here on fantasy. Um, I am going to now um, talk a little bit about um, uh, some reports that we've got, mostly because we get a lot of questions about reports that are specific to season management or race management, right? Not everybody's got all the time to click on the reports tab, scroll through the giant list and, and talk about this. So I'm just going to look at the reports that are on season management and race management, because sometimes knowing that those specifically are there um, can be, you know, really valuable uh, in the heat of the moment type of a thing. First, I'll look at season management specific reports. Not a lot here, but some valuable things. Um, current points in pay. Is what it sounds like, right? We're just going to look at your current point standings, current payouts, which again um, is a little bit disjointed. Um, but um, yeah, current points, current pay, all those types of things are here. You can toggle these columns um, with all the stats or different information that you want. Um, I, now that we've added the toggled columns, the current points and pay has become really valuable for me on a week to week basis. Um, basically, screenshot that, put it on social media. Um, people like it. Um, next up the, I'm going to, obviously I'll gloss over the IMCA point average was soda point average report, right? Let's take a look at point averages as it, um, has to do with the was point average. And, you know, people start asking questions about point average. You can point the, you can, you, you can have access to the information immediately. I um, as you see fit suspension bypass report will show you the drivers who you have suspended as a racetrack. Um, and uh, who you have allowed to compete with the suspension. I did not talk about suspension management here. It um, has not really been rolled out completely. The interface is available. If you want to play with it, you can, um, but um, there are still some bugs to be worked out in suspension management. Um, so, but the suspension bypass report is part of that. Now, race management, the reports list is a lot more robust. Um, there's a lot of things here. Entry list, just what it sounds like. This is your entry list. Um, I don't have any entries in this future event, but let me go back in time here, and I'm willing to bet that I will. Um, entry list, pill draw, all that kind of stuff. There is um, the addresses, if you need their address information for whatever reason. There is transponder list. Um, this will also show you if they rented a transponder or not. Um, I always talk about that in race management. That's where you can find the information. Contingencies doesn't really apply. Um, there are three different lineup reports um, that you can choose from as well. Um, so look at all three of these and decide what's most valuable for the people who need printed lineups. I am 
um, a humble announcer. Um, I like the lineup sheet report because it gives me number, name, hometown on one line in lineup order. It, it makes makes my life and job easier. Um, so, you know, potentially announcer could be looking for that. Um, there's also just the regular lineups report, which will have them in a list on the left. Um, and then a chalkboard one, which I don't know anybody off the top of my head that uses this, but here we are. It's a chalkboard lineup screen. Um, the reports area will also include results as well as um, a media version of the results that I use for, I just copy and paste this at the bottom of a news article. Copy, paste there, we're good. There's my media results out there. Um, there's also some points and pay reports um, by race type, total for the night, uh, detailed point standings. If you're running a passing point show, the passing points report is in here. The Wasota point average report that we also looked at in season management is in here. And then your race manager assignment is in here as well um, if you're using Westhold. Um, and that's a look at our reports as well. Um, and that's really what I had to talk about here tonight. Um, I, I promised I wouldn't take up too much of your time. I tried not to while still giving you the per pertinent information. Um, I want to come back on Wednesday where we'll talk about race management, including our entries, lineups, and results how to connect that information to orbits or race manager, the live timing screen, the lineup monitor screen, and then points and payouts. Um, so those things are there. Um, Friday, um, online tickets, advanced ticketing tools, news, website tools, and then of course the double heat race format with passing points. You know, how to do, because that's, that's much different than the regular Wasota nightly lineup. So how do we look at that? We'll add it, look at adding some points and pay schemes, all of those types of things. Um, be sure to show how, uh, how they see that I have their date sanctioned. There we go. That's a good one. Um, so we'll go back to season management here for just a second. Um, Devil's Lake, you said. Devil's Lake is in here. Um, apparently there's no apostrophe in that. So my apologies to the good people at Devil's Lake. There we go. Um, so when we go to season management and we look at an individual event, you'll be able to see if the class has been sanctioned or not. And I know Callie is working on approving those uh, sanction requests as we go through it. So I look at any of their events, right? And I can see that, you know, these classes are not sanctioned. Um, if they're supposed to be, obviously, you know, get in touch with your sanctioning body. Um, if they show Wasota here, they're Wasota sanctioned. Um, so you can verify if your classes have been accepted by Wasota or not. And I really encourage you, you know, if you race on Saturday, just dip in there on Wednesday, double check just to make sure all your bases are covered, make sure it looks like it's supposed to, those types of things. Um, reporting um, or importing payments into QuickBooks. That's part of that payments tab that I said we'd come back to. We don't want to look at that with Devil's Lake. We want to look at that with uh, the, the pretend racetrack. Um, in the process of... Um, that payments tab, going through the payments tab at the end of a race night. Um, this is what it looks like, right? You can create checks. You can print reports and mailing labels. There's also a QuickBooks export button here. So it doesn't bring up a report in the typical My Race Pass sense. It actually do downloads a .iif um, basically file type that you don't open, um, but then you import directly into QuickBooks. So you select your bank account. You select your expense account that you've got built into QuickBooks, you download, then you take that download, upload it into QuickBooks, and we're good to go there. Um, John, the passing points report, I will be able to give you more information on that on uh, Friday, just because frankly, I don't remember off the top of my head if that correction has been made. I know that there's been a lot of conversation about it, um, but I'll be able to let you know more later on with that, John. So I apologize for not having the information in front of me. Huh? Oh, we have to do this. Make sure to let Callie know you were here. Um, email Callie Sullivan the answer to your question. What is What date is the official opening date of Wasota? The answer is April 1. Email that to Callie so she can track your attendance, um, which again, I think this year's attendance has been the best that I've ever seen. Um, so I'm super thrilled and happy and thankful that you guys decided to come and watch. Um, April 1 seems optimistic considering the snow that's in Iowa right now, but here we are.
And that's all I've got. Um, I'm going to stop presenting here, um, but I'll stick around for a couple minutes um, in case anybody else has any questions.